Yeah, where do we go after that? Are we just saying so nationals? Jordan, take it away. Boom. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Choker Bros. We're starting this one out as organic as it gets. I'm your host, Samsonite Prime. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And with us today is our special guest, all the way from Canada, Mr. Jordan Dank. What's going on, guys? Thanks for having me. Uh, Honor to be here. Yeah, and uh, before we get started, we want a special shout out to our sponsors, Cards of Evilies. Um, right now, I believe already you can, the, the boxes are for pre-order, so you get that sweet Noctis pre, uh, pre-order card. Um, that card seems insane to me, uh, especially if, if we don't see any changes to Turbo. Um, so go ahead, check out cardsofevilice.com, get your, uh, your, your cards at now, pick up your Cecil H's, pick up your Versoyas, um, get them, get them while they, while you can. Uh, if I had done better, those cards might even be worth more than like 20 cents, but you know. It is. It is. It is what it is. Let's uh, let's talk about nationals, shall we? Sounds good. It feels great to be, you know, fresh back from nationals. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, I guess we'll start. Uh, how, what did you guys think about? We'll start with the LCQ, uh, which happened on Friday. Uh, so, what was your guys' take on it? What did you think of the stream, uh, Jordan? I'll start with you. Well, I was pretty still at first, like. What I was happy about was that they had the thing streamed for the most part, right? Like, I remember getting there and um, and we had one of our guys from Canada, uh, like from Ottawa, actually, and he was playing in the thing and and we wanted to be able to watch him, but also we weren't allowed there, right? Like, we weren't allowed in the building, so we basically had to skedaddle elsewhere. And for the first two rounds, we were just getting updates via text. Um, and we weren't planning on, like, originally they had said it wasn't even going to be streamed till the top uh, top eight or whatever. Right. So I'm just really happy that they they had a stream going from basically the start of the tournament because I know that wasn't planned and I know that was probably a last second audible. So big ups to them for for getting on their horse and doing that because that's kind of the stuff that the community needs. I feel like for sure. Yeah, I was really excited. It was it started streaming much sooner than I anticipated. Um, without that stream, I almost certainly wouldn't have ended up playing the deck I chose to play. Because it was a very last second audible thanks to the stream. It was really cool. There was this business center um, at the hotel that uh, uh, me, uh, Sam, at one point Jordan, uh, like ev- we all locked ourselves in this business center. Um, and they had like two computers up and we actually put the stream on, uh, which was pretty cool for us to be able to watch that stream live. Um and just be able to test our test our decks like right there while watching the stream. Not not to mention that 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 tournament was going on just right down the street from us, which was pretty cool. Yeah, like literally around the corner right. as we were locked in the like grind dungeon type, <laughs> yeah, that's type a, of area. That's, hey, to be fair, it had a, it was nice and AC and chairs were pretty <laughs> comfortable, but it was kind of the grinding dungeon. We'd have people stop by from like opposing teams that kind of like peer through the window, or every now and then Oki would try and open the door, uh, and try and. But we need a special knock. Special knock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget what the password was. I believe it was Lopez sucks. It was Lopez sucks. That and turned out to that turned out to backfire as Lopez won the national tournament. But but the password was Lopez sucks to get into the secret dungeon uh, where we were testing, uh, where Lopez could be find grinding the ice deck. Um, yeah, because uh, Lopez was in there at one point grinding too, which was interesting. Um, but yeah, you know. Leading up to it, like once once the LCQ was over, it was heartbreaking uh, for a lot of people. Um, you know, for only only four players out of what sixty four made it, mm-hmm. and to see Matthew Rice and Chris Adams basically miss the top cut by one round of every LQ coming in, grind do really well in the LCQ, and then both of them get dream crushed in the end. That was that was a uh, heartbreaking for sure. Um, you know, like there's there's some people who are like, well, I'd rather, I'd rather lose earlier than later, but like I would have much rather, you know, seen them both play, um, despite however they they were gonna do, in, in the actual tournament of nationals. To I mean, those those two players are definitely worthy of being there. So oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. You know, and and the amount of tournaments that that you know, I don't know how many uh, Matt Rice did off the top of my head, but the amount of LQs that Chris topped in, not to mention second place. 
if we had a point system, he would have qualified twice over. So right. I'm hoping next year for a point system. I don't know how many LQs you guys get up in uh, Canada. What's it like for you guys trying to grind in Canada? Well, um, we had two. The problem is Canada, obviously, geographically speaking, is this massive country, but the population density is much smaller. So the groups of players, I feel like, is is smaller despite it, you know, geographically speaking, being larger, right? So I know that there are only three uh, LCQs uh, or LQs, sorry, in Canada, two of which were in the Toronto area because mm -hmm. obviously that's the most populous. And then one was in the Vancouver area because that's yeah. like the second most populous. I'm assuming there's going to be more just because this is the first uh, first competitive season, right? So right, yeah. There, there's going to be some learning curves. I think that they have other games to take from that they can kind of apply some of the things that other games do and, and right. kind of fix things quicker, so to speak. But um, yeah, we really only had three, so it was basically Crystal Cup or bust. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, and that 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 seems insane to me too because because exactly how big Canada is, um, if you're further out, you simply don't have an opportunity. Um, oh man, like if you're in Saskatchewan, good luck. Like you're just. I, it it total... makes me wonder if there's any places in like Mexico actually that are playing or that have good scenes, because um, their magic scene isn't terrible. So it makes me wonder if. Uh, I mean, it's not great either, but it does make me wonder because like zero people would have qualified from Mexico, you know. So like, mm -hmm. what is their best shot to like go into Texas, um, or maybe maybe the maybe like the OP isn't even in Mexico right now. I don't I don't even know. Um, but it's interesting to think about. Like, for example, like were there any LQs in Alaska at all? Well, I would imagine not, but don't quote me on that. Right. So. It, yeah, I don't think there was. Right. Um. So it will be interesting to see the game grow and and what happens next year. Obviously, they'll have to plan for those things. Um. Nationals had a lot of hiccups as far as time goes, um, and we had a lot of breaks. <laughs> uh, but you know, to me, it wasn't that bad. I had a lot of fun. It was definitely the most fun I've had at a tournament um, this year by far. Um, the The negatives I saw were just some of the rule sharking that I saw. Um, I, I and I've said this before. I'm pretty sure, but I think there's a difference between playing clean and making your opponent if your opponent misplays or whatever it's fine but like trying to draw out a a or or tell a judge that something happened it's almost like lying you, you guys you guys know what i'm saying like yeah basically saying like something happened that wasn't quite true um just because you interpreted it that way i saw that happen quite a bit and that made me a little sad but i don't know what you guys think of the actual tournament process like tournament play goes well, I, I had a sideline view for most of it, so uh, <laughs> I, uh, I I mean, I thought it was good. I thought this, like you said, I'm going to echo a little bit what Sam just said. I mean, I thought that the the experience for the whole weekend, um, all things considered, was the most positive experience I had at an event all year. And every event that I've gone to has been better than the next, basically. I mean, Toronto, I had an absolute blast. It was unreal, right? Yeah. But then you go to Gen Con, you get to meet some people that – you know, I've only spoken to online, or I only know online, right. right? And then you then know those people. You take that and you you see those same people, and it's almost like you get to see friendships grow. Your your circle expands, and it it really is kind of a, a sick thing to be, uh, you know, a part of a, as it happens organically, so to speak. Um, part of that's you know just the venue too. I mean, LA right. is unreal. Um, we ended up getting to go to a football game Thursday night. It was probably one of the best games of the season Did so far. Did the Vikings far. win or lose? I actually never found the, out. The Vikings lost, but I have never been to a place. Like, there was more purple in there than there was blue and uh, white. You know what yeah. I mean? So it, it was it was a Vikings barn despite it being in L.A., which is pretty right. cool to see. Um, I was rooting for the Vikes. Unfortunately, they didn't win, but, man, yeah. it was sick. Man, you um, rooting for the Vikes? Yeah, you not really hard. Were, I, I wasn't. I'm, I'm not like. I'm not like ride or die Vikings fan. I just was cheering for them. So okay, because I, like, I was like, you really would get along with Jeremy then. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's more, no, he's, not he's more ride or die, but. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, I just out of the two teams, that was who I was rooting for. for. Sure. I wanted oh, this. for sure. Yeah, although, like, I guess, like, if I, if I, so I'm a Vikings fan, but if I really was impartial, I would have liked to see uh, L.A. win because their hometown. It's just kind of. It'd be kind of cool to see them win in their hometown, but, but I get it. 
No, no, go go Vikings. <laughs> the Rams left. The Rams left us here in St. Louis. All right. Yeah, that's true. Oh, that's right. You can't. You literally can't cheer for them. Uh, yeah. So no. and, and and that was the best part of Nationals, right? So Nationals was fun. Um, I had a good time. The Wolves did was fun. The side events were, were fun. Like it was, it was decent. But like the 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 best part to me was locking ourselves in, in that barricade. Um, drinking, <laughs> drinking on Sunday night and, and just talking about Dumb and Dumber for an hour or two hours straight. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, I posted on, on the, the page about that, but I swear that has to be up there for Guinness record for, for a quickest time that a 30 pack gets crushed between four guys. Like right, yeah. we were, we were in fifth gear going through well, that. Thing, a 29 you know I mean? pack. Yeah. Yeah. There was one, <laughs> there was one left over. Yeah. Oh, we left one. Yeah, you left one. It was so, supposed to be rice, probably. <laughs> it probably was supposed to be rice, yeah. Um, and it was cool to be able to hang out with rice. I mean, I think the dinner was like – I so I sat with um, Angelica, Oki, uh, Max. Um, let's see. So I'm, try, I'm trying to think of them in the order um, because, because like the – like I, I wanted – I really wanted to sit with like everyone. That was the thing. We had – how many people did we have for dinner? We had like 31 yeah it was something something, something crazy uh, like i'm not sad because i got to like sit there and talk to brian for a long time and i really get along with brian um i could see becoming very good friends with brian if i if i lived over in cali um but so i wasn't sad about like the people i ate with uh but it, it you know i wanted to be able to sit with joe uh it would have been cool to sit with rice you know all, all the people that were there it, that was like the coolest part is having dinner we had a korean barbecue oh my god it was so good I know before we got on the stream, Jordan was talking about how, how delicious his in and out experience was. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know what? We decided last second, we were going to come to the barbecue, but by the time we had gathered all the Canadian boys, which, by the way, that's another part of the Unreal part of the trip, we went with like seven of us, I believe. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them were guys like from Toronto that I don't get to see that often, you know, because right. I'm from Ottawa and that's like five hours away. So, right. I mean, my like, the, like the three musketeers in Canada for me are like me, John, and Tony. Yeah. But then yeah. there's, I mean, Alistair, Andy, Justin, and Jason, and then Jocelyn as well. You know, they all came as well. Yeah. And I don't get to see those guys that often. So we were hanging out with the Canadian guys for most of it too. And, uh, man, being part of Team Canada with those guys was definitely one of the best parts of that whole experience. But that all being said, we were going to come to the barbecue as well. And then what ended up happening was by the time we gathered all of the, the Canadian lads – like you guys had already left kind of like maybe half an hour before, 40 minutes before. We're like, you know what? We're just going to be showing up halfway through dinner. Might as yeah. well go grab some in and out and then link up with them when they get back. Yeah. It turns out that wasn't the case because we waited an hour. <laughs> oh, no way. Yeah, Are you serious? It was worth it though. I thought it was really worth it. Yeah, it was, it was very good. Yeah. Thankfully, I had Joe there to uh, be mine and Rice's head chef because we had no idea what we were doing. Yeah, it was Rice's <laughs> birthday too, I heard. Oh, yeah. 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 Happy <laughs> birthday to Rice. <laughs> no, it wasn't actually his birthday. We just trolled no. him so hard. We had to yeah, come no. down and sing happy birthday and did the whole thing. Um, but, you know, all right. So so I think we all agree that, like, the outside the tournament was the best time. Uh, so I would like to see, you know, something along the lines of us doing that at, at some point together. Or, or what would be cool, in my opinion, is if, like, next year for Nationals, we just went, like, a whole week early. We just took a week vacation. And we all just hung out wherever it was. And that would just be really fun to me. Um, and then the last few days we can kind of grind, uh, and do that, that type of thing. Um, but right, yeah. it's definitely hard to balance like the social aspect for sure. Mm -hmm. for sure. Well, I was like, I was all about the social aspect afterwards, <laughs> but up into it, I just wanted to grind. Yeah. It's, it's you, you always lose like prior to the tournament anyways, you always lose one for the other, you know, it's very hard to get an even mix of both, but right. it's kind of a juggling yeah. act. You have to navigate and, and, and go from there. I feel like. So we can talk about Nats real quick um, as far as the, the tournament itself. Uh, Chris Lopez won. Chris is a player out of Kansas. Um, you've seen him top eight quite a few times. I think he top eight both the Petite Cup and the Crystal Cup over there. Um, those are probably the only two final Square Enix tournaments he's played in. Is that correct? Yeah. So as far as Square Enix tournaments, he actually has a 100% conversion rate um, and top eight and a 33% first place rate which is pretty good yeah that's dope yeah so uh, i'm happy about seeing him um uh, move into the national team i feel confident that he can represent north america um very well 
the actual tournament we had timed top 31, which sadly, it's just, it's just sad. Uh, um, I got knocked out in top 31. Um, you know, Cody met a swift, swift destruction by Turbo Ice. Jordan, oh, oh, uh, oh. two one, two one, two one, and then destroyed. <laughs> Uh, we're still swift. We're still swift. We're, we're right. pretty swift. Um, yeah. Jordan, you were the favored winner, XOing day one, starting day two with a bye, and then you just, you know, you, you won your first match though, right? So you're qualified for Worlds. And I then, am qualified And then Turbo for... showed up and reared his ugly head. Yeah, and I had another swift 2-1 <laughs> defeat. <laughs> Dude, the way I looked at it though, like going into Nationals, I was between X. Turbo was actually one of them, but it was yeah, like... But like part of me, I feel like, as silly as it sounds, there was a big part of me that just didn't want to run it for just the sake of like, I don't know, the, like my integrity or something like that. I didn't that's, want to run it because I, I, I thought felt, it was a yeah. shit deck, you know, like for the game. It is, yeah. But I, I also respect the fact that, hey, this is a really strong deck. Yeah, um, yeah, I couldn't and, fault anyone for running it. I, I ran it in Gen Con like for a reason, you know what I mean? So, right. but that being said, I think that was a big factor and... You know, I expected there to be a lot of turbo, and I knew that my deck was a coin flip versus turbo, but just everything else that I tested it against, I felt like I had a really good chance of doing well. So luckily I dodged turbo for most of it. I mean, I played two turbo the entire tournament, right? Like my first round, and then luckily I won that flip, yeah. and then and then in the top eight, and yeah. I lost that flip. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's, that's just what it is. It's kind of a flip of the coin, uh, which is, you know – it's been discussed to death. Uh, I don't think that there's anyone, and I don't mean any shade by this, but I don't think there's anyone of high merit in this game that thinks that Turbo is okay. Um, no, definitely not. I, you know, I've I've talked to a lot of players, you know, <clears throat> and, and nobody's nobody is just like, yeah, Turbo is healthy. Don't worry about it. You could beat it. It's like no, like we're all building these decks in order to beat Turbo. Like, like for example. I think the wind water deck that you played um, has concessions to turbo um, and could be stronger if turbo wasn't a thing. Uh, I think that my deck obviously had concessions to turbo. Um, it was in fact a deck to beat turbo if we're actually just being honest. <laughs> um, and it did that very well. I played, I think three games against turbo and I three out turbo. If I'd gotten turbo into my top cut match, I feel really good. Um, so we don't really have to discuss that to death. Um, I don't. There's not much to discuss, right? Um, seeing Turbo win uh, was awesome for me. I. I oh, me too. I yeah. love it. I love it for a bunch of reasons. Kind of like the only way for something like this to get addressed by the people that can address it, because um, there's no way we're just gonna have a like you know a gentle gentleman gentle person's agreement to not play Turbo. That just ain't happening. No, so, like it was on my my so, considerations too. And I hate yeah, that. I know, same, yeah. And so seeing it win and seeing it succeed are, are truly the only ways to have the higher ups that have the ability to make something happen take action. Because well, until it starts to win, and the issue is it hasn't had representation because too many people are taking our line of thought and being like, look, I'll accept a flip with Turbo. Right, but and, I don't want to play it. But I don't want to play it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Rather than and, even focusing their time on optimizing Turbo. Because, I mean, shout outs to Lopez for winning. He took a DGS package that I ran in, in thing and probably made it better, right? Right. So, like, he probably took the time and and tweaked the deck and made it better. What I think a lot of people aren't wanting to do is do that because it's like, hey, the deck, the deck like, <laughs> is bad for the game. You know what I mean? It's bad for the game. Right. No, I agree. And, you know, seeing what the highlight to me – and I, I, I think Nathan was really cool. I'm super happy that Nathan is going to Worlds a second year in a row. He's the only repeat Worlds contender. I think he was the finalist. Big shout out to him. Yeah, I think he's a finalist last year too. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah, he got yeah. second last year as well. Um, but seeing Wait, him, second last year at Worlds? Yeah, no, at, at, uh, at Nationals. Oh, Nationals. Oh, okay. Uh, seeing him get crushed in Game 3 to Turbo was satisfying to say the least. Not because I wanted to lose. I didn't. It's because he did what he could with his hand, knowing he was against Turbo, and then just got destroyed. Absolutely just ran over um, in that game three. And, and again, I like both of those players. I like Nathan Perez and uh, Lopez. But seeing that happen, I think, was good eye-opening if people, like you said, are watching. 
Um, and I hope that they are. And the thing is, is that it's won a lot of nationals this year. Uh, I, I think it's at least like seven of the 10 or something along the lines. So you can ignore it and say, yeah, it's not, it's not taking over other decks are top eighting, but it's winning a lot in a field that hates it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too, is I don't think people are taking into consideration the amount of people that for regionals or local qualifiers or even opens are, are electing not to run it because they're either saving it for nationals or they are, you know, quote unquote, taking the high road until it gets to the point where, look, this is nationals, it's do or die. I'm going to go with what I think gives me the best chance, right? Yeah. So I think you're seeing you're seeing like um, representation bias in some of those results until you all of a sudden see nationals and then, oh wow, Turbo's kind of kind of running show, and it's like, yeah, you know, and it and it's kind of sad. Yeah, and, and on the top tables, and someone said like, oh, there was only four Turbo in the top 31. Yeah, if you were watching the top tables at nationals, many of the top tables were uh, were turbo. Uh, oh, absolutely! All around me, people were playing turbo, uh, and Okimoto also lost to turbo on stream. Uh, you know, if there's any doubt that Okimoto is a good player um, and can build a deck to beat turbo, the whole get good noob uh, shouldn't really factor in because we watched him get crushed on on stream. Yeah, I mean, the whole get good thing is just absolutely insane. I mean, I like to think I'm a, a decent, good player. And right. building my deck, I got to the point where I just conceded the fact that, look, if I want to run something that's actually going to be good against the entire meta, I have to accept a 50-50. Like, my deck, I played 100-plus games testing against Turbo. Took all of, like, an hour. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Not actually, but, like, <laughs> that's the beauty of it, I would say. But, like... Truthfully, I, I played 100 plus games against Turbo leading up to this event um, with least, yeah, Water Deck. And, and what I found is I won like, you know, I, I was maybe like 53% against Turbo. It was a, it was a coin toss, 100% going right. into that anytime I was going to play it. But I knew that, hey, if I play Wind Earth, if I play Vice Kings, if I play Mono Water, you know, I'm probably going to win. Um, so I, I just kind of accepted that. And if you have right. to build your deck and just accept that as a fact, yeah. There is clearly a problem. Right, so building your deck, um, keeping cards in mind. For example, let's say you're going to build a Golbez deck, right? And you're going to play six-drop Golbez. Like, I think it's more than healthy to keep you to H in mind um, and your considerations for your card choices. Like, maybe if you're playing the Earth version with, like, uh, like there used to be a Water Earth version, then you play the Hecaton. Um, maybe you keep options open for those. So, you know, if, if Turbo was a thing, like, let's say, like, let's say, like, Argath was, like, the biggest and baddest thing in Turbo and it was doing really well, then, like, absolutely, you should be considering walls for your decks, obviously. But the difference is, is that you can't build a deck with Turbo in consideration. You have to build a deck with Turbo as the main deck to be, and if your deck loses the Turbo, you don't have a chance, you know? So, like, your deck was 50-50, so, but you have three buys going into their event. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You can even afford to flip that coin and take a couple losses if you play if you happen oh, to play man. against Turbo. One hundred percent. And don't think that the buys didn't go cross you know my mind when making that decision, right? Like, I think that the likelihood of me running Turbo would have ramped up had I not had buys. You know, for sure. Um, so I built my so deck yeah. at, at, at like eleven o'clock at night. The la last minute, I I saw um, Jason Wherever do well with Earth Lightning um, on stream for the LCQ. And I decided I want to play Flyndit too because I've been trying to get my group to play Flyndit. And I took Zach's binder and I pulled out like 152 cards. And I kept cutting cards until there was 50 left and I decided to play that. I'm telling you what, without the three buys, no chance do I run that deck into like a, a field of I have no idea what I'm going to play. Uh, I don't want to see Mono Lightning. Um, Mono Lightning in the history of Final Fantasy has always been the most popular deck um, in the Europe, or not in Europe, in the North American region. Uh, when water is typically the most popular deck, uh, I didn't have any time to test that matchup, so I wasn't sure about it. Um, you know what I'm saying? So, so I had to take the consideration that I have three buys, and I could afford to run into a couple wind water and a couple lightning decks if I felt good in my other matchups. Um, I don't think that it's healthy for someone like Cody who doesn't have these buys to have to construct a deck where it's like, well, if I play against this turbo deck, well, that sucks. Right. And yeah. it's not, it's not like, it's like, and you know, it, turbo is not like a, a, there's like a one in like 15 chance. Like there's like a one in like eight chance. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know the actual numbers. I'd love to see them from like RB or something, but I have no doubt that among the top tables by round four, 
round five. I There's would a majority say, turbo. Yeah, I was gonna say twenty five percent at the very least on turbo. Yeah, that's a when I say lot. majority. I don't, when I say majority, I don't actually mean fifty. You don't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's but the most twenty five percent is a lot. Oh, it's, yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Unfortunately, I was able to avoid turbo all day day one. Right, but that, wow. that, but that was just Even luck, right? There, there was like a moment where like the eight tables down from me had a turbo on each side of the board all the way down, and I was the one table that didn't. So, right, and that's that's crazy to me. Um, and that can't be healthy. You know, that can't be healthy for the game. Um, going into worlds, I it'll be Opus Seven. Um, I don't see any cards that just stand out to me as like the turbo hate. The Noctis is pretty cool. Noctis is the only one, yeah. And it, and it is pretty cool, but it's no better than Cecil. And Cecil's really good, too, also. But, like, you have to... Well, I guess Noctis is better because it, um, it, it's a little bigger than Cecil. So it could kill, like... A I don't know if that's that relevant, though. Right, that's what I was saying. I was like, maybe it can, like, trade with a Genesis. Sarah is the only thing that comes to mind as something that makes that relevant, that jump relevant. Right, well, so, so that's the point. Like, it's good. It's good against Turbo. Um, it doesn't do anything when it enters the field, so it's bad against everything else, um, like Cecil H's. Uh, but I, in other words, people say like like I think Jamie Fulker at one point said like, well, it, it's irrelevant because uh, Worlds will be Opus Seven meta, you know, and maybe from Opus Three to Opus Four you could say that, uh, but maybe from Opus Two to Opus Three you could certainly say that. But if you look at like from Opus Four to Opus Five. Uh, the tricolor monster deck was one of the strongest decks still going into Opus Five, despite the fact that a whole new Opus had come out, and it was the strongest deck at the end of Opus Four that nobody was really talking about. Then you move into Opus Five, and like Mono Ice becomes like very, very good. It was already good near the end of Opus Four, also. Uh, that's when the Setzer uh, package came out that Joshka and um, and Toby had kind of made popular, to say the least. Uh, but you go you move into opus six right at the very end of opus five at the crystal cup in kansas i don't know if you remember this cody but everyone was talking about turbo right oh, everyone yeah, was worried about turbo i played yeah. turbo that friday night in the local so did so did um zach everyone was worried about it it's not like turbo wasn't a good deck now we move into opus six and turbo got squall right um it got better and better. The deck is more refined. People started playing Umero. People started playing DGS. Um, the deck's getting better and better. Moving into Opus Seven, we don't know. Like, like what? What are you gonna do? Like, you, you, those cards aren't banned. You, you could say like, well, there'll be stronger cards out. Yes, but you can't play them with no hand. You know, yeah. Like, like the big strong cards, like Sin. Like Sin is awesome. You can't play Sin against Turbo. <laughs> no, of course not. Right. But, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, you could hardly play Noctis against Turbo. In fact, I think Noctis is 3-drop, right? Yep. Noctis, I, I, I truly feel that the only cards you can play in your deck that are good against Turbo are 3-drops. Um, there are some exceptions, like Dataluma's good, Zidane's good, Wall's good. But those are good on turn 1, and they sit there and they apply pressure while defending you at the same time. Uh, particularly, Wall's really good at that. Um, Dataluma's just hard to deal with, and Zidane can minimize the fact that the, what Zidane's good at is making sure that when you attack, they don't have Sid Austin, um, which is one of the scary things. But if you ever play a backup, at least you could play your Cecil or your Fasoya or your Noctis. So your three drops are good. Um, whereas if you, your four drops are almost all unplayable, particularly in a multicolored deck, because if you draw the wrong two colors, then your backups, you're just screwed. You know, so if you, let's say you open, let's say you're playing uh, Wind Earth and a, a really great start for the deck is like turn one Simi uh, and, and, and uh, Moogle. If you open Simi Moogle, you actually have the potential just to beat every deck there is. Except if you play against Turbo and they make you discard your, your hand and you draw like Wall plus Wind card. What are you going to do? You just pass yeah. the turn. you like, I drew my Diabolus, which is probably the strongest if not close to the strongest card in the deck and i drew my wall also the strongest card in the deck and i have two backups and now i'm gonna pass turn and neither of those cards are gonna be in my hand when i untap that's like crazy to me you know yeah absolutely i mean the whole point of the game is to be interactive i mean especially there's so many other uh angles to take this from too it's not all just a 
competitive play. We're, we're playing a game that we all really like that we want to see grow. And in order for it to grow, we need new players to want to play. If right. they go to their locals and they just get stomped by Turbo and they can't play their sweet Squall, Barret, Tifa deck, like, and none of their co combos go off, I mean, that's going to be an unpleasant experience for them. Now, I'm not saying you, you just take it easy on new players no, no, yeah. or whatever, you know what I mean? But, like, like, and obviously going to a tournament, you know, it's competitive, blah, blah, blah. But, like, there's different ways of, of losing, right? Like, for example, you if they play... They play against a Fasoya deck that, you know, they actually just got dominated by, but at least they got some combos off and they got their opponent to five damage. Like, it's a totally different experience when they actually get to see some some card There's interaction some card actually, And they feel like they had a chance. Yeah, exactly. Where, whereas, and they might not even realize that they didn't have a chance. And But that just might be enough to spark them to get oh, to I the agree. point where they start playing and they go and buy more product and they decide to go travel to Crystal Cups. Like, there's this whole friggin' trickle down effect that happens here, right? Whereas if they go and they see it's all turbo and and they play don't get to play any of their cards and be like, this game sucks. Right. I don't want to play it. And it sucks because the game is actually amazing. It's just this right. one deck makes the game feel bad. And we weren't having this conversation last year. We were having we were having the conversation that maybe Emperor's too good. Maybe Minwoo's too good. Maybe Chantel's too good. But yeah, shout out like, to the guys on the boards that compare Emperor to Gesper, by the way. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to you. Yeah. yeah, well, shout out to the guys that just say, just play Emperor. Like, that's clearly the solution. <laughs> like, at some point, you're going to be able to just draw extra cards and play your Emperor. I, I've never seen that happen, but more props to you if you're able to do that somehow. Um, yeah, and let's ignore the fact that Emperor is actually kind of like not a very strong card in this meta. You like, can't period. even block so you it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you sacrifice your other matchups just to run this this dead dark card that also doesn't let you run other cards that might be good in other matchups. Like I realize you gotta, at some point realize like, you know, there's people that are of the opinion, Hey, look, you're going to have bad matchups. It's going to happen. Yeah. But this is, this is different, right? Um, it's not just the equivalent of, okay, I have a bad matchup. It's the equivalent of, okay, we have this deck that not only can anyone really pilot it. Um, I, I mean, I've, I've played turbo at, at a lot, obviously. Yeah. Um, played at a major event. I understand how the deck works pretty well, and I realize there is a skill disparity. Like a, a really good player at turbo is going to have a higher win rate than a not so good player at turbo. But which makes sense fact, in the way it should be. Yeah, but the fact is, is that a not so great great player can still take turbo and win a tournament with it. Yep. And for me, that's kind of a problem. Um, yeah. You know, I, mean, I whole, feel like the whole anyone wins thing is probably fine for locals, but like, it's it, you know. It just doesn't make sense in a high level competitive environment, you know. And, and even not so, we're, we're seeing people, we're seeing reports of people saying, "Oh, I'm running this popper tournament at my locals and just got destroyed by Turbo." Well, that doesn't <laughs> sound like fun, right? No, that's awful. <laughs> like, but that think about true. it. Like, what you don't get Squall and you don't get Genesis, you know? Squall, like I've, I'm on record saying Genesis doesn't need to be run in Turbo. It doesn't. Like it's, it's, yeah. It does not need to be run at all. In turbo. It was really great in the tempo builds because they had to respond by playing a forward, and then you would genesis them, and then continue to win the game. At this mm -hmm. point, they can't even play the forward. Like no. they just can't play the forward. Yeah. Like, and if they do, it's gonna get Matthias, and if it doesn't, it's gonna get Austin. Like, the, the, I'm not saying genesis isn't good. Genesis is busted. It's just it's not necessary. I, I agree with that. Like, but but that's the point. You know, it's like. You know, back then we were complaining, or I wasn't complaining, but some people were complaining about Emperor, but they're complaining about Minwoo. Sure, those are very strong cards. But if you built your deck around pinging, you needed to have an out to Emperor. If you built your deck around, uh, or Minwoo, if you built your deck around pinging, you need to have an out to, to the Minwoo. And if you built your deck around activations, you need to have an out to Emperor. It's one of the reasons that we put Rabans in our monster deck in Shantotos, one and mm -hmm. out to the Emperor. Um, besides just hoping for a big Cognazzo, but you know, Cloud Darkness will, does that nowadays, but it, it's more than that. It's that you can't even play those cards. You know, like I could open up with two backups and like two water backups and then like draw water card Cecil. I can't even play the card that I have. That's an out to this matchup. That never happens when you draw the Hecaton against Minwu. That never yeah. happens when you draw the Rubon against Emperor. No, you that's know, the biggest know. issue is that that I see I like I see so many comments on these threads and um you know everyone's entitled to their opinion of course but like at the end of the day I feel like a lot of the people that are posting that are just saying oh we'll just run this answer it's like well you answer you're suggesting to run cost 4 cp right and there are games where you literally cannot afford to play it because of how degenerative this deck is so 
what I don't understand, or or the problem is it's not even that you don't end up getting to play it, is that you get to play it, but maybe you play it by turn four and you've already eaten five damage and the game's over anyways. Right. Like right. They don't so you play your, how your, much you play of a your clock emperor, and then next turn there's a Shiva and the game's over. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. I, I built my deck so specifically. So I had Flandits for the early game, Cecil, H's, and for Soyuz to punish them if they were to go on the um the super aggro plan. I had Cleones because I needed to make sure that I was safe late game so I couldn't get Shiva down. But like this deck just can't beat like Mono Lightning, for example. You know, but like I just had to like I wanted to have fun at Nationals and I decided I wasn't gonna run Turbo because even though I was pretty close to running after a lot of testing, I decided that I didn't want to be a hypocrite, and I do think it's bad for the game, and I wasn't going to run it. Um, it, it. That's no shade to, like, Lopez, for example, who I'm happy he ran it. I'm glad that he won. One, I like the guy. I, I like Chris Lopez quite a bit. Um, I'm happy that he won, but I'm, I'm happy to see the turbo, like we talked about, run it over. But that just wasn't going to be me. I'm known for my Earth Water decks, and I thought, hey, look, I'm going to have fun at Nationals and play an Earth Water deck. Um, but yeah, yeah, I had to cater it to beat Turbo so hard, and and it did. I crushed Turbo. But guess what? During the 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 side events later, I played Turbo in the finals of the side of it, and I lost in game three. That against Turbo, like that's so funny. Yeah, man. But that's the thing, right? Like, because it's important to establish this too, eh? Like, there is absolutely zero issue i have no problem with someone deciding to run turbo yeah big big not. props to lopez for winning congrats um you're welcome for the dgs package no <laughs> just kidding um but, but you know what i mean even like so my opponent in top eight i played chris neal and after the game he's like good game and then he chuckled to himself and he literally looks at me he's like i know it's kind of silly to say good game like with this deck or whatever and i was like man like you have nothing to apologize for playing this deck. You you yeah. made a deck. I'm sure you worked on it. I'm not naive to the fact that you put work into the right. deck. You know what I mean? Everyone that played for Nationals, I'm sure, put work into their decks. And you made a choice that you thought was the best deck, just like I did. You know what I mean? So there's absolutely mm-hmm. nothing wrong with it. And and kudos to them for deciding to run those and doing well with them. Big shout outs to them. Stoked to be part of Team North America with both those guys. Yeah. Um, so really important to establish so, that. So Worlds is and I think, up, I think right? they would agree. I think they would agree with oh, most of what so we too. just said. Like I know, I know Lopez is a big ice fan, but he's like Cody. I think he likes those tempo ice builds. You know, he well, he Lopez. plays his backups up front, so you know he's a control player. Um, so you know the fact that he just played this super aggro decklist shows me like how broken it is. But so let's yeah. say let's say Worlds is coming up, right? Um, we don't know a lot of the cards, so it is really too early to speculate about the meta, but. Going in, are you going to be sad if, let's say, they have the three deck format? One of your three decks is, ends up being turbo. Like, okay, so I'm not like if, it's, if that's the way it is. I mean, we haven't talked really all yet, like team, because yeah. I think like a couple of the guys were talking about, you know, all collaborating, trying to like put decks together. I know, I know, Matt wants to do that, and I'm all for that too. I think we have a lot of really solid players on the team. Right. So I think with with kind of the 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 brainstorming that the eight of us can do together i think we can come up some with some really good stuff that being said in a three deck format i mean correct me if i'm wrong but it'd be really silly to not play a deck that is basically a coin flip against anything because i can't see i can't see other other teams allocating a deck spot just to beat turbo that makes no sense not to mention they have to guess that it's the deck you're going to play at that time yeah, so so it makes it means that no one's going to run a, a hard counter to turbo in all likelihood. So if they're not running a hard ca- counter. We're very comfortable that right, turbo so is all three of their decks 50, have 50. to have all three of their decks have to have outs to turbo, and yeah. only one of them can have three walls. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, that's what I'm saying. So most yeah. mo- like there's no chance they can actually truly turbo proof all of their decks. I don't think. Yeah. So I think it would be silly, and I expect every every team basically to have one version of turbo unless something's addressed obviously we don't know the entire card pool but if we were going into nationals to, or world sorry tomorrow i yeah, would be shocked be, right? if i didn't see i didn't see one of the three from like almost every player be turbo because it's just a smart decision and at, is, at the end of the day we're playing for the absolutely world ridiculous though right yeah 100%. i mean if if we went into nationals on on the radar of every single person's deck that they could play i would say that every person every person at nationals put turbo in the top three decks that they, that they would play and that includes all the people that hated turbo have you yeah. guys ever met someone that re- would not have played it if it guaranteed them the spot 
No, of course not. No, no. One. Yeah, I, I, I was close to playing it myself, and I hate the deck. I tested a lot with it. It, I won a lot with it. It was great. And then I said, yeah, that's that's just not going to be me. But I considered it. Um, I know Cody, you were really close, right? Yeah, my other two decks were two different turbo builds. Before yeah. I came up with Windwater, like a, the morning before. The morning before, you you audibled out of turbo. Yeah, and that, I didn't even. I just like threw that deck together on the fly. And you audibled out of turbo between two other choices. One of which being turbo, and the other of which being turbo. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane to think about it like that, right? Like, but when you like think one, about it, like... One was Umaro, and then the other was more like the like One Orphan, all that stuff. Um, right. But... Yeah, yeah, it's just... So, going, <laughs> going to Worlds, I, I'm, I'm hoping that it's fixed. Um, you know, I, I'm not aboard the whole, like, let's ban gesper i don't know that that's the right call i don't even like banning gesper i don't like that i i agree with people who think that banning cards is bad for the game but i think putting an aretta on gesper is fine if they want to try that i think limiting it restricting it to one copy or so seems fine i think if you were going to restrict thaumaturge that would probably be fine um but at least you can interact with thaumaturge um Although there's the there's the the point that like Gesper doesn't deal you any damage ever they can't kill you with it, um, <laughs> but it, it is what ends up killing you right I mean so I think like if you were to restrict Gesper that would be fine would anyone here have problems with restricting Gesper? No I'm on the ban train actually myself. Yeah and that's that's fine to be on the ban train I'm not against it but but if they restricted it to a one copy would you be happy at least? Absolutely. I'd be ecstatic. I'd be ecstatic if they, they don't even have to necessarily restrict it. Obviously, they could just make it, change it from being um, an ununique. They could turn it into a unique, right? Um, yeah. They could do something errated. I've heard it uh, spoken about by a lot of people where they errat it to um, like the if you do so. So if you discard a card, your opponent also discards a card. Yeah, now, granted, makes that makes it unplayable. That makes it a borderline unplayable. I would say. Yeah. But they could, they could but do that, something that's like drastic. So the, the least amount, so here, here's an example of the least thing they could do. They could make it to where you can only use it during your main phase. And even that, it's still obviously nuts. Even that would help a little bit, you know? Like I don't know how much that helps, truthfully. It, it, it helps with Squall. It makes Squall less bonkers. Well, the only time that that's relevant, though, is if a player isn't, like, aware of, like... The, no, not the necessarily game. true, because you might want to play something... Uh, and you might not, depending on how combat goes. So you can attack. I'm not saying it's, it's going to happen ever, but you can't say it wouldn't. To where you attack with your squall, and maybe you're going to activate Gasper, but maybe you'd rather not. Does yeah, I just think it, I think if they're going to take action, they're going to take action that would certainly result in the problem being fixed. And I can't say for certain right. whether or not that would. Whereas I can say for certain that if they made it um, uh, unique or you know limited right. or errata that it would have a, an effect no oh for because sure the games the games that you auto lose are the games they get double jesper going really really oh early. yeah the obviously that, yeah like and, and triple jesper is irrelevant single right, jesper is really that's strong why, that's why restricting it would be the very least i think they should do mm -hmm. but you know i don't know if they would do that unless they had that issue in japan which is, which is, in all honesty, a really crappy way to look at it. Like, if we're not having, you know, if Japanese players have too much honor or whatever to play this deck, then, like, it's not a problem. Well, that's not true. You know? Like, it's just not. Um, same thing happens with the time limit. So, in Japan, um, if, if the players go to time, and it's going to be decided by time, one player will just politely concede. Because that's the nicest way to do it. And that's just their mm -hmm. culture. They're they're nice people. Uh, that's never going to happen here. Like we're going to hit time game three, and then you and your opponent are going to stare at each other for twenty seconds until someone comes around and says, "Hey, that's a double loss. You guys can't just sit here and stare at each other." <laughs> you know, like, yeah. and I've seen that happen. I've I've watched it happen in an LQ where two people would just debate for like five minutes who should concede. It's you know, like, hey, well, I don't want to go all tangent on time again, but. You guys all know how I feel about time limits. Uh, should be should be in top cut. It's ridiculous. Oh, it's entirely ridiculous. ridiculous in top cut. Right, that yeah, shouldn't totally. be on your mind. No, so have yeah. they, they have they come out and said that it's going to be the three deck format at Worlds again? No, not at all. 
No, okay. that was just speculation. If, if I had to guess what the coolest, absolutely coolest possible format would be, it would be uh, All Star Draft. Also, no, All Star Draft, <laughs> Title, and Standard. Those are the three formats I think that the players should all have to do, and you have to make it through like. The whole, you do an all-star draft, and you take your record from there, and then you move into title. You take your record from there, and then you move into so, so constructed. So maybe three rounds of each, and then you play top eight or top whatever it is after those those rounds. I think that would be cool. But to, to, to introduce that idea of tight uh, – not title. To introduce the idea of all-star format but not use it anywhere else other than Japan I think is a waste. Um, I'm not even familiar with that is. It's cubing. Oh. Um, so basically drafting out of the strongest cards in the game or whatever. I don't expect... I mean, I would be shocked if they did something like that. I, I think it would be cool, but I would think it would be cool if they had it like introduced at in every region over the course of the next competitive season prior to just like unloading it to people. Oh, yeah. And Having a Crystal Cup be All-Star Draft, I would 100% fly for that. Yeah, like I think Worlds ultimately is trying to determine as best it can because the problem with a tournament is there is an insane amount of variance in tournament in, yep. a, in a tournament and a single tournament. Like the best player, like there's no way of knowing who the best player actually is because there's so much variance round to round, tournament to tournament. Sure. So as much as much as Worlds is trying to determine the best player, um, you know, I think I think introducing formats that no one's ever heard of is like. Like last minute is just is just a little bit. To be fair, I think that's what they did last year, though, right, with the three deck format. But at least it was constructed. Everyone had played constructed, and if and if you hadn't tried other decks, I mean, to me that's indicative of a weak player, anyways. Yeah, that's fair. That's really fair. Um, Is there anything else that we're missing that you guys want to talk about before we wrap it up? Jeez, I feel like this has been an hour, but it's just blown by. Uh, (laughs) I want to give some shout outs. I want to give some shout. Let's get it. So I'm going to throw shout outs to uh, the Canadian squad. So that is, uh, well, myself, shout out to me, but uh, Tony, uh, John, Alistair, Andy, Justin, uh, Jason, and special guest Jocelyn. Cheers to you guys for making the trip amazing. Uh, cheers to the Choco Bros for making me an honorary Choco Bro for the weekend. That felt quite lovely. Yeah, um, it was a pleasure to have you, man. Yeah, no, it was awesome because, I mean, I've spoken to you guys. Obviously, I met Cody briefly, you know, at Gen Con, but really didn't get to talk to you. And, like, man, hanging out with you guys over the course of the weekend, like like I said, you, your circle expands and you get to yeah. kind of meet and hang out with new people. And, man, it was it was an absolute blast getting to chill with you guys all weekend. It was, um, man. We enjoyed 5 it. 5 a.m. Bringing beers. Over some, bringing over some of your Canadian friends too, dude. That was awesome. Yeah, well, we chir- chir- taught you what a chirp was. Like, Yeah. It was there big. No, there, yeah, I tried not to do any chirps on the podcast this week. <laughs> um, i'll have one but we'll save it <laughs> okay and uh, then hold on i'm missing uh, oh big shout outs for for deck help uh to my boy lawrence olivia who day one um was working on this deck with me yeah. and um unfortunately he, he qualified for nationals was not able to go because uh i think family, he's got man. a kid on the way yeah, yeah family family yeah. man you know so totally totally cool with that unfortunately sure. he wasn't there otherwise i'm sure he'd be going to london with me so shout outs to you buddy yeah. and i know i'm missing people um, I mean, shout out to you too. You helped, and so did uh, so did Joshka. Actually, he helped me with the deck a little bit yeah. too. But but like that was more in the later stages. It was mostly Lawrence from day right, one. Yeah. So he needs a big shout out. I'm gonna leave it at that. Otherwise, I'm just gonna say everyone's name. So yeah. uh, oh, Brian sh- Berkeley. No, Brian Berkeley, best <laughs> Bunny Stasis player you've ever seen in your yeah. life. Shout out to Bunny Stasis. Also, sick game. Check it out. Yeah. So so my shout outs are real real easy. Shout out to Irving for Bunny Stasis. He was awesome. Uh, shout out to Brian Berkeley who was. The coolest person coming out of the weekend, not close. Uh, Brian Berkeley was awesome and amazing to hang out with. Um, super special shout outs to my team, uh, particularly to Zach and Cody. Man, I love you guys. It was so awesome being like just being a part of that team. Um, I, you know, everyone has their team. I, I could not imagine my team being anyone else. I really couldn't. Like we, we really well, we really do mingle well together. Um, shout out to the RVA guys uh for for just hanging out like oh man i love this guy shout out to curtis shout out to to jonathan from the triple triad pro, pro, uh podcast i can't even say that triple triad podcast um yeah he, he was dope all weekend um man i just had such a good time shout out to rb uh for putting on a spectacular event uh, i had a ton of fun at nationals um you know i 
it made me a little sad that they 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 opened it up day two because I think a lot more people would have came in to the, the hotel this day uh, if they had known that it was going to be like that. Uh, but if you're considering nationals next year, whatever you do, make it happen because Square Enix puts on a hell of an event. It's totally worth it. All right, absolutely. And then my shoutouts as far as they go. Uh, shoutouts to uh, Craig, our judge, uh, for buying me breakfast uh, tournament morning. Uh, and Craig <laughs> made no judging errors to my knowledge. I think I'm supposed to tell everybody that. Oh yeah. man, he also taught me the secret menu of In and Out, which is unbelievable. So yeah, <laughs> what a beauty. But yeah, he uh he he takes credit for me going seven one on uh day one of Swiss. Uh also shout out to Sam for buying me breakfast because everybody bought me food this weekend, so and uh Joe Lazinski for buying me uh Korean barbecue. I'm not actually broke, so if anybody thinks I'm broke, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well you're certainly not now. <laughs> everybody paid for my meals like all weekend, so uh, shout out to those guys. And then, uh, obviously, the Matthews, both Oki and Rice, uh, for always in my DM, being in my DMs and talking about the game. Or <laughs> those are some cool whatever. guys. Those are some cool guys. Yeah. Uh, and then, obviously, shout out to you guys for being the best team I could ever have been a part of. Team Easy Peasy. Uh, even though we didn't get it this year, we'll get it probably next year. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, before we close out, we want to thank our sponsor, Cards of Evil East. Again, Opus 7 is coming out, so uh, get your get your stuff in now, man. Uh, I, myself, am, for the first time, am going to want to pre-order a case, uh, um, so I'm super excited about that. Um, but yeah, get, get those in. If you're just getting singles, get the singles. Um, but yeah, other, other than that, I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, thank you for joining us. It's been a heck of a podcast. Uh, go, go check out, I think, Jordan, Jordan uh, you have a page, right? A Canadian page that you guys host? Oh, nice. And it's soon to be updated with about 18 30-second videos of our vlog. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that is check us out at the Breaker's Corner on YouTube. All right, yeah, check out the Breaker's Corner. Um, check out all of our, our friends' podcasts um, that join us as well. Uh, and thank you for joining us. I've been your host, Samsonite Prime. And I've been Cody Snodgrass. And this is Jordan Zank. Yep. Thanks for having me again, guys. Yep, thank you. We'll see you guys later.